Hey, this is Chris from Financial Modeling Education, and in today's video, I'm going to walk you through my thought process when building out a financial model. So the first thing that I'm going to need, no matter what, is the raw data. And by this, I mean this is something that's going to come primarily from QuickBooks or Xero or some kind of accounting system. And what that's going to have is a bunch of dates across the top and then a bunch of account names down the left side like this. And then you're going to have all kinds of data filled in here for each month. The first thing that I'm thinking about is grouping all of these line items into specific buckets because I can't build a model based on each and every account. It's just going to be too complicated. So I'm thinking about how do I group them together into buckets? The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to jump right into building out a three statement model and I'll explain that. So this is the primary engine that runs the entire file and similar to the raw data, I'm going to have a bunch of dates along the top and then line items along the left side but these are actually going to be composed of the buckets that I modeled here. And this is to make my forecast a little bit easier. And so the way I'm going to be setting this up is this is going to have a lot of actuals, and this is for time that has already gone by. And then it's going to have forecast as well. And this is stuff that I need to estimate about the future. I'm going to be building some kind of a sum ifs formula in here that just says, look for any place I've tagged a bucket in here and then pull the actual information. And so my actuals are going to be populated from my raw data based on a sum ifs formula. When I get to the forecast, well, now I need to do a little bit of thinking. I need to decide, am I going to build an input here and just have it drive this number at a basic level, or do I need more support? And so for something pretty basic like supplies, I'll just take an example, a non-material cost, I'll probably just put an input here. This is going to be year over year growth, and I will quickly forecast that account here. But Something that has a lot more detail like revenue, headcount, or capital expense is going to require a sub-schedule. And so these are going to be sub-schedules that go behind my three statement model. And like I was saying, it's probably going to be, you know, revenue is going to be one, headcount will definitely be another, and then capex probably another. This is just really anything that's material to the company that you're looking at. And so I'm going to have schedules all here. They're probably going to have a similar layout, you know, dates and line items, dates, and line items and so on, each of these are going to feed into their respective portion of the three statement model. So we're really just putting out some real estate where we can build out the forecast that requires more detail than just sticking it in one easy line. The next thing I'm gonna be doing is because my model's already getting complicated, I'm gonna build here a control panel. And this is where I will enter date changes, but more importantly, where I will check for errors. And what, I'm, what I wanna know is, does my balance sheet balance? Does my statement of cash flows match the balance sheet? Does the net income from my raw data match the net income in my three statement model? And so any potential error that can pop up is going to flow through to here. So this is a very important tab that I'm always gonna be checking. The last thing is I need to be able to build summaries, right? I have to be able to share this with my team. It doesn't make any sense to have somebody sit over my shoulder and look at a financial model that's got 3,000 rows. I need to condense it and communicate it in some way that people can understand. And so everything from the back here is now going to flow into a summary. And this is going to be something that I can PDF and send around to my team. Again, I'm always thinking about double checks. Does my totals on the summary match my three statement model? Do the subschedules match the summary? Anything that I can think of is going to flow through to the control panel. And so what I'm going to be building is a consolidated list of possible errors all the way throughout the file. And that way, if something goes wrong, well, I can immediately go look for it back in the file. And the best models that I build, if I have an error that triggers here, I'm going to make sure that I link that information to each and every tab in the entire model. So that way, the second something goes wrong, I can say, you know what, I got to go to the control panel, investigate my error list, and then trace it back. So I know that's a lot of information, but that's directionally how I think about it. I need the raw data first because I need the history before I can calculate the future. I want to build the three statement model because that's the primary engine of my file. Then I'm going to build sub schedules for line items that need more detail. I'm going to have summaries so I can send it to my team. And then lastly, and always, I'm going to have a control panel to check for errors because that is the most important part. So thanks so much for watching. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.